Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. This is Maria Liberati. What does food mean to you? Happy April and happy spring. And I just want to give a shout out and a thanks to Chef Joe Borio and everyone um, that attended my virtual Easter Bake Along this past Friday. We had a blast and we did a traditional Easter bread and Chef Joe Borio joined in and did a recipe that's a tradition in his family, which are these small, sweet ricotta Easter pies. Really good. So, and I did a traditional Easter bread that, as I mentioned, I, I uh, it's a holiday recipe, but I tweaked it a little when I did my PBS series in a Amalfi with some lemons from Amalfi. So thanks for everyone that joined in. We, we did have a great time. Thank you. And I heard a lot of you that did make the recipe for Easter and had some great results. So please share pictures of your recipes i know of the of the breads that you made uh we definitely would love to see share it hashtag the maria liberati show and you could win a copy of an autographed copy of one of my books from the book series also this month the month of april we're saying happy birthday to one of my favorite people of all times of history leonardo da vinci who is just so talented and so so, so multifascinating and such a, a renaissance man. His birthday is was on April 15th. So we're celebrating all the very interesting things and uh, amazing things that Da Vinci invented. You know, Da Vinci was really a true foodie. Not everyone knows that. You know, we know of the just amazing Mona Lisa and The Last Supper and all the other amazing discoveries and things he invented. So the things he invented and, and dabbled in in the food world are kind of pushed aside. But I wanted to dedicate a whole month to celebrate Leonardo's birthday to all the things he did so that people know, hey, Da Vinci was actually a foodie. My book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style, which I had the pleasure of researching in Italy, um, is divided into 10 chapters and each chapter is devoted to to a city or town that da Vinci lived in and the traditional recipes that are traditional for that specific town or city. Each chapter does tell you about the uh, things that he worked on while living in that city. So we're going to have fun this month remembering and uh, discovering all of the foodie inventions that Leonardo da Vinci or it did himself. And one of my guests today, he's really fascinating. In fact, I mentioned my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, which by the way, you can find at marialiberati.com. You can also find on amazon.com, on Kindle, and really online anywhere can't you can certainly email me maria at marialiberati.com and uh, we'll direct you to where you can get a copy if you want an autographed copy please email me maria at marialiberati.com and i'll make sure you get an autographed copy so my guest today one of my guests is Dave DeWitt, and he wrote this fascinating book called In Da Vinci's Kitchen. And that book was the book that uh, actually I began researching for my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style. Dave is a food historian, and he's going to tell us about some of the other things that Da Vinci invented and some interesting things from his notebook. You know, his notebook was written backwards like in a mirrored uh, way so that da Vinci had this anxiety about everybody wanting to copy what he did. So he tried to write things backwards and in such a way that made it difficult for people to copy. In my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, we also do have some specially translated poems that were found in Da Vinci's notebook, a professor from a university that specializes in old Italian because it was written in kind of an old Italian, uh, translated a few poems for us that, that Da Vinci wrote about food. So they're very interesting. They're, they're actually in the, they're also 
in the back of my book also. So again, happy birthday, Leonardo da Vinci. That's coming up on April 15th. And also I should mention in order to celebrate his birthday, happy birthday, Leonardo da Vinci, we're giving away autographed copies of my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style. So if you share an episode for the month of April, you'll be entered in a drawing to win an autographed copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style. You can also share a photo of some of the recipes from the Maria Liberati show. Share a photo, hashtag it the Maria Liberati show. You'll be entered into the drawing this month to win an autographed copy of the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style. You know, as I mentioned, um, Dave DeWitt is going to be my guest today and he wrote a book da Vinci's Kitchen and and you'll hear of da Vinci even though he was a vegetarian he loved salads he also had a sweet tooth and one of my favorite recipes it's just so simple and uh, just all real ingredients but this recipe is in my book the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style but it's also a version of a recipe for a sweet found in Leonardo's notebook it's Charlotte a la Milanese and it's in my book and this recipe is a la Milanese refers to Milan and a Charlotte is a dessert. This is from the elegant city of Milan. Comes this elegant yet simple dessert, Charlotte a la Milanese. It's a great way to make use of day old crusty bread and an elegantly simple dessert. You know, Da Vinci said that simplicity is the ultimate art of sophistication. So my book includes recipes that were influenced by Da Vinci's life and travels. Leonardo was a foodie of his time and he used dishes from his favorite cookbook of his day to paint the meal for the Last Supper and other famous masterpieces. The Royal Sforza, that's S-F-O-R-Z-A, family of Milan, were one of his many patrons. So he lived and worked in Milan for some time, and I do have a chapter in my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, devoted to Milan. This recipe is an old traditional Milanese dish, still great today. Now, not everybody now uses the day old bread but this as I said it was influenced from da Vinci's notebook and you can certainly do it with day old bread it still makes a great dessert very rustic and it's it's a delicious dessert so here's the recipe again it's from my book the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style influenced this recipe is influenced by a recipe recipes found in da Vinci's notebook. This is Charlotte a la Milanese. So two pounds or a kilo of Granny Smith apples, the green apples, one cup of granulated sugar, or I prefer organic cane sugar, one third cup of raisins, three tablespoons of pignoli nuts, one fresh lemon, a quarter cup of dry white wine, it's 150 grams of dry white wine, three tablespoons of butter, a day old baguette or crusty bread and it should be crusty and one third cup of rum so what you're going to do is place the raisins in warm water let them soak for 20 minutes you should always do this if you're using raisins in a recipe because raisins are quite dry and they'll get even more dried out in the oven so let the raisin soak for 20 minutes in warm water. Then you're going to drain them and squeeze out the water. Let them dry on paper towels. Let the raisins dry out on paper towels. Set that aside. Cut the bread into thin slices and set those aside. Peel, core, and slice the apples. Place in a saucepan with three quarters cup of the sugar, three quarters cup of dry white wine, lemon peel, enough water to cover this whole mixture, and cook the, the apples until they're al dente. Um, I'm sorry, that's a quarter cup of the dry white wine. So you're making sure that you zest that lemon. You get the peel off. Okay, so you're cooking this now until the apples are al dente. Not too mushy, not really hard, mm -hmm. just a little, just, a, you know, al dente. <laughs> Drain the apples and let them dry on on paper towels. In a bowl, place three tablespoons of butter. Now the butter, the three tablespoons of butter, they should be left at room temperature for about an hour before making this recipe. So you're going to then place the three tablespoons of butter
butter with the remaining sugar. Blend till softened into a soft creamy texture. Using a pastry brush, brush the butter cream onto the creamy butter that, that you just blended onto the sides of either an angel food cake or a pan for a Charlotte. An angel food cake has a, a uh, like a hole in the middle. Then place the bread slices. And you could also do this, hold on, you could also do this in a casserole dish, like a round casserole dish. It should be a little high though. Then place the bread slices on top of the butter. Fill in, okay, so you're gonna fill in now, alternating apple slices with raisins and pignoli nuts. Pour a spritz of rum on each layer of fruits and nuts. Finish by topping with a layer of bread slices. Brush the remaining butter cream on top of the bread slices and bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about one hour. Remove from the oven and let that cool and serve. And boy, is that delicious you can put confection or sugar on top. One other tip, if you'd like to make everything easy to remove from the pan, you can coat the pan with parchment paper and then place the butter on the parchment paper. This way, when the cake is ready to be removed from the pan, you can just pull up the parchment paper. If you like to do that, you can. But uh, please try this recipe. It's it's all, it's all delicious, but it's got some historic... Um, to it since it's related to Leonardo da Vinci. Hey, do it for Leonardo da Vinci's birthday. Have a da Vinci birthday party for April 15th and make the cake then or just anytime. And please take a picture, share this recipe with everyone, share it, um, hashtag your photo of the recipe, hashtag the Maria Liberati show. And again, we are giving away copies of the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style all month. If you share an episode or post a recipe from one of our segments, hashtag at the Maria Liberati show, you'll be entered in a drawing to win a, an autographed copy of the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style. So one of the things people always are curious about is how to eat like Leonardo da Vinci. He really did influence what we know today, the Mediterranean diet. And as I mentioned, we're celebrating his birthday on April 15th. So we're all the whole month of April. I'm dedicating to Leonardo da Vinci. What an amazing genius. Leonardo da Vinci is known for his preference for simple foods and avoidance of meat. He believed that his diet was the best way to stay healthy and mentally sharp. So how can one follow his lead? How can you eat like Leonardo da Vinci? Simple foods include fruits and vegetables and certainly not processed foods. Those are the things that he, he focused on in his diet. The best place to find fresh fruits and fruits and vegetables is in a local farmer's market or your own backyard. I know so many people are growing their own. I do with those of you that know me know what I, I have uh, I do the same but if you can't you can go to a local farmer's market. The next best place is the produce section of any store. Be sure to do your research to make sure your produce is fresh, properly ripe, and if you can, organic, so that it will last long enough to be worthwhile if it's, if it's at a ripeness that's the proper ripeness, unless you want to use it immediately. The combination of simple foods to create complex flavors is another staple of Leonardo da Vinci's meals. You can accomplish this by keeping a variety of ingredients from every food group and making dishes that include a variety of nutrients. Done correctly, this will create flavorful foods as well as a healthy diet. While the benefits of a vegetarian diet are consistently debated, it's true that most people, especially in America, eat more meat than they need to. Cutting down on meat, especially red meat, could have positive effects on your health. It's something you could consider trying if you think a change in, of diet is in order. The Mediterranean diet as it is today was as I mentioned, largely influenced by da Vinci's ideas and principles. Lastly, enjoy the local delicacies in your area. Leonardo da Vinci often ate many traditional dishes from his hometown of Tuscany. You know, he was the original person that promoted eating locally. And back then, that was probably 
you had to do that because you didn't have foods being transported all over the world. So he ate locally. As I mentioned, he ate many traditional dishes from his hometown of Tuscany that influenced his ph philosophy on food for years to come. Your own area, your own local area has its own food traditions that might be worth exploring. Don't overlook the local restaurants and delis. Uh, go to community dinners, get to know other cooks in the area. Well, right now I'm, I'm sure it might be difficult to find community dinners, but you can find things like that online and uh, local restaurants, local food places. You can find that as well. And, and, you know, you can find, I know there are groups online now that kind of eat together since we're, not everyone can go out to restaurants or, or uh, can go to a community dinner. So find a way to explore it locally, get to know other cooks in the area or other people in your area that love to cook, explore local specialties. You might find your new favorite food. And for more on Leonardo da Vinci and his life as a foodie and exploring different creative topics that Leonardo da Vinci would love. Stay tuned for the month of April. Each episode will be dedicating more and more things about da Vinci since his birthday is on April 15th. But you can also get a copy of my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking da Vinci Style at marialiberati.com, at amazon.com, at Kindle, and almost anywhere books are sold online. And that brings to mind my other books in the book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. You know, it won the Gourmand World Awards in 2010, which is a prestigious international award that I'm so proud of. And that includes The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, which is a coffee table book. And it's, uh, it's a culinary memoir, but it also includes recipes and cooking tips. But more importantly, it's a culinary memoir. So there are stories that connect the recipes to special places and experiences. The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Holidays and Special Occasions Second Edition is also a culinary memoir, but it again, it has stories that connect recipes, menus, and other tips for the holidays going from Christmas Eve to all the way to Carnival, which is uh, like Mardi Gras that we have here in the United States. So there are, I believe, about 10 different holidays. You have Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you have the Feast of the Seven Fishes, La Bafana, which is the Epiphany, um, you have Valentine's Day and Carnival. And I forgot New Year's Day and New Year's Eve as well. There are stories, culinary memoirs, recipes, cooking tips, all in that book. And again, that book and the three that I just mentioned could be found at marialiberati.com, artoflivingprimamedia.com, which is the publisher's site, website, and almost anywhere books are sold online and bricks and mortar stores. And if you can't find for any reason, reason, feel free to email me, maria at marialiberati.com, as well as if you'd like an autographed copy of any of the books, just email me and uh, before you order your book, and I'll make sure that, that we get an autographed copy out to you. And don't forget, share today's episode, share a picture of one of the recipes that I mentioned on one of the episodes from the month of April, hashtag it, the Maria Liberati Show, and you'll be entered into a drawing to win an autographed copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style. And I just wanted to also mention, we are going to be doing some more virtual events. We did a great, a really fun virtual event uh, for Easter. It was an Easter bake along I did with Chef Joe Borio. I did a traditional ricotta Easter bread and Joe did a traditional ricotta pie from his family. And you can find out You'll, we'll actually be posting the cooking class that we did very shortly, but stay tuned on my website. We are going to be having some more virtual cooking classes as well. Some coming up for the spring and summer. So please stay tuned for those. Sign up for my newsletter at marialiberati.com and you'll get first notice of any of the cooking classes coming up or special programs that we have coming up as well. You can sign up for the newsletter. And uh, 
stay tuned because we're going to have a, an interview as mentioned before with Dave DeWitt the author uh, he's a food historian very interesting but the author of Da Vinci's Kitchen he's going to share some interesting facts about Da Vinci and uh, some of his inventions that you might not be aware of Today we have a special guest. You know, the month of April, I'm devoting to uh, Leonardo da Vinci. His birthday is April 15th. And we're kind of devoting this whole month of April to Leonardo da Vinci. There are so many fascinating things about him. And I have a book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. When I was starting to do my research in Italy on that book, the book that would keep coming up with all kinds of research was Da Vinci's Kitchen by Dave DeWitt. And I was so excited when my production person found Dave and uh, said, you got to interview him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, his book was the book that I kept finding in Italy for research on Leonardo da Vinci when I did my book. So I was really excited to have Dave here. And uh, so yes, Dave, thank you so much. This is Dave DeWitt. He is a food historian and author of Da Vinci's Kitchen. Dave, thanks so much for being here. This is fun, I like it. Thank you. Can you hold up a copy of your book too so everybody gets to see it? Great. Sure. Yes, Da Vinci's Kitchen. So Dave- I had to buy this used on Amazon. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. When was it published? Oh, I think it was 2006. 2006, oh, so it's a while ago. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, since I've, I've done so many books, I, I try to keep copies of them all, but somehow they get given away and I have to rebuy them all the time. Yes. And uh, I think this is about the fourth time I've uh, repurchased this book. Uh -huh. I don't have any originals myself, so I have to get old library copies now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, one of the things that I thought was so interesting among many things about your book is that um, you know, a lot of people, obviously, the things like the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, they certainly outweigh, you know, foodie inventions, but Leonardo da Vinci was a foodie, and you also found out there were so many facets to him, but I love in your book, you tell us about all the things that people don't realize that uh, he invented for the food world. So tell us about some of his inventions that we may not be, we might not be aware of. Well, you have to understand that da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. In other words, this guy was into everything and probably was the most knowledgeable person of his time and in just about all fields. And so um, he had kitchen inventions. He had a, a kind of stove he invented. I don't know that it was ever practically used, but they have a model of it in the da Vinci Museum. I have a photograph of that in the book. And he invented all kinds of little tools tools and, and all that for the kitchen. Um, and we have illustrations of these, but I'm not sure that it's hard to know exactly which ones he used and which ones, you know, are just part of the mythology right. uh, about all this. But da, da Vinci was uh, basically, um, he was a salad guy, you know? He liked salads. That's what he liked. And he had his own salad dressing. I have a recipe for that in the book. But um, uh, I found in his notebooks, he would have a shopping list of going to the market and what he had to buy. And it was almost all vegetables. Um, with a little bit of meats, but those were for his servants and his help that he had around the house and uh, his assistant and so forth, because he was a, a true vegetarian. So Da Vinci's kitchen was mostly a, a salad bar, I would say. Oh my goodness. So now I know why I feel such an affinity to him. I'm, I'm a salad person. I could eat salads like for every meal. So now I know why I feel such an affinity to him. I didn't realize that. But one of the things I notice in my research i believe that the mediterranean diet the way it is 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 somewhat based on his philosophy the way of eating would you agree you know balance and well i i would say limiting meats and uh eating mostly fruits and vegetables um is the basis of that whole um idea so yes i would i would say that there's a a great correlation between uh da vinci and his influences on the uh, on the cuisines, but a, a lot of what um, has to do with Da Vinci was the fact that um, it was the start of the Renaissance and the start really of Italian cuisines. And one of the things that 
distinguished Italian cuisines from others was the importation of new crops. And I'm speaking about rice and I'm speaking about Durham wheat, which is the hard wheat that you can make pasta out of. And those inventions and, and those new crops uh, really helped Italian cuisine uh, flourish. So that all helped. And that is, I guess he used that in the, his recipes and things like that also, Vinci. Did that kind of influence him as well? I, I think so. Um, most of his re supposed recipes are what we've taken from his notebooks. Yeah. And uh, he had, you know, like 7,000 pages of notes and illustrations and all that kind of stuff that people are still going through and, and figuring out more and more and more about da Vinci. Um, it wasn't like he had published a book of recipes, right. which he didn't, but he had one cookbook um, in his library, and that was Platina's cookbook and uh, on health and, and good good spirits or something like that. And uh, But that, that was, most of the recipes in that book were vegetarian. Could have been through your book, but his, in the last supper, he had a picture of Mule, I think, with oranges, and that was supposed to be from Platina's cookbook. Is that correct? Do you know that? Or I think so. Yes, I think okay. you're correct. Everybody yes. wonders where he got that from, and yes, they found that cookbook in his. I guess where 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 did they find Platina's cookbook? I guess in his one study or something that he had. That. I think so. Yes. Well, and they found out that that recipe is where he got that recipe that was portrayed in the Last Supper. What other inventions uh, did he invent? I understand things um, that like, did he invent the olive oil or the beginnings of an olive oil press and the spit, like a rotisserie, those things also? Yes, yes, he had a, a, a machine for pressing the oil out of the olives. Uh -huh. um, and he also had kitchen uh, gadgets, like for example, I'll hold this one up for you. This is roasting meats over an open flame. And you can see he had a very elaborate setup over here for, okay. for doing that. Wow. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to find those things to illustrate this book. Now, da Vinci was, he was a showman. I mean, he was uh, P.T. Barnum of his time. He produced all these Renaissance banquets. Uh -huh. And he, although he was producing these fancy foods and, and had a marvelous kitchen and helping and chefs and so forth, preparing these extreme banquets, um, then he'd go eat a salad, you know, in the kitchen. <laughs> he wouldn't he wouldn't eat any of the of the meals he was preparing he had his own thing to do it sounds like you maria <laughs> yes, yes it does you know and people make fun of me because they're so interested in eating a salad i'm like well i you know you do it as a show and you prepare these grandiose meals for people and then it's like you just go in the back and eat a salad and you're absolutely right because <laughs> you just don't <laughs> you spend all your time and efforts into making this show so oh that's so interesting so i had heard he was somewhat of like a wedding planner like a banquet planner then correct yes that's exactly correct yes and, and he was hired to do that and that was just part of his income and some of the many things he would do he would paint for a while and then he'd go cook oh wow well, and the other thing i heard and again i'm not sure if it's from your book well there's two things one that i thought was really funny he invented the first uh, sort of like a spaghetti machine and it was so dangerous like you would have to go inside it or something did, was that did i find that in your book i think it is in my book you know um I, this mean, I mean like a, a long time ago i don't, I don't go back and reread it but. yes i do the same thing especially if if you've written it a while ago i think it's some kind of a spaghetti stretcher there you go yes and i had read this this, this is this this is actually the machine for an olive oil mill that he invented. Okay. I don't I don't know that this was ever put into effect, but uh -huh. he had a design for one anyway. Right. He's trying to always improve around on 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 his designs. And I guess that was probably the first beginnings of what we know today as an olive oil press. But yes, I had read yes. some kind of a spaghetti stretcher. And uh, the first one was quite dangerous because you'd have to go inside of it or something. And I don't know if people got hurt uh, with the first, the very first beginnings of this, some type of a pasta machine thing where you could stretch the dough out. But um, I had read that he also did something like that as well. So he had some, yeah, quite the, and, and also if I'm not mistaken, I think, 
he had something to do with the invention of like table settings, like the fork, knife, and spoon, because way back, like um, people use their hands to eat, and he actually that's right, yes. And also, I think the coordinating of the table linens, like when he used to do his banquets and things, the folding of the napkins in an artistic way, I think he started all that. So, um, I believe, I believe you're right. And he, he invented uh, an alchemic stove, and here's a model of it that they, they built for the museum, the Da Vinci Museum uh -huh. in Italy. Uh -huh. And uh, you can see that uh, this was actually a model taken from his drawings. Wow. And uh, pretty inventive guy, I would say. Yes, yes. Maybe a genius, if you think? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. The, the, the genius of all times. I, I had, it was such a, a project that I was in love with when I was, when I was researching him for my book, I just kept going and going and going and researching because there's so many unbelievable things about him and just so many levels of so many fascinating things that he did. It was like nonstop when you're researching him. But um, is there any any like particular recipes? Now you might not remember because I know you did the book a while ago. Anything um particular you can tell us about like his favorite recipes or things? Well, he had a, he had a real sweet tooth, so there's a lot of uh, sweet uh, fritters and things like that that he made, and he had a whole he invented a whole bunch of special spoons. Um, if I can find it, I'll put it up there. But special spoons uh, that uh, were used to make these fritters. Or, you know, you you take the dough and you put it in a spoon and then hold the spoon into the oil to fry it. And uh, he had all kinds of different designs of it. Yeah. And uh, he also had his own serving utensils, like all this stuff. Wow. So he was he was he he was quite an inventor, and uh, he had a he had a forge, and uh, you know could could actually make all these all these tools. Yes, yes. Well, I did find I know um, there's a salad dressing recipe, which actually I'll share with my listeners. Oh, in one of the one of our segments for the month of April, I know I had found that. And uh, I think there was also a drink with like rose water, just a very basic, but I understand like, right. Right, yes, with rose water. And uh, you're right, I think there was a sweet recipe with maybe almonds or almond flour or something like that as well. Yes, there's that too. Yeah. His uh, salad dressing recipe has parsley, spearmint, thyme, olive oil, vinegar. There you go, yes. Pretty basic. Pretty basic. And Pretty basic. Did you do you think that I think he used to also do like different very basic soups with beans, and I think that would be influenced from the region he was from, from Tuscany, right? So he did. I know he liked soups, and again, if he was a vegetarian, he would uh, like the things the things with you know beans because that had more protein in them also. But that it, it's just so interesting, very very interesting. Did you you got to read his notebook? I, I got the uh, the Dover version of his his notebooks, uh -huh. and they're uh, you know they're abbreviated, but still there was a lot of information in there, and that's where I found the uh, recipe for his salad dressing, just in his notes. Yes, yes. Translated, of course, and he he didn't write like normal people. He wrote mirror writing. You knew that. Didn't you? Yes, yes. He used to write mirror writing because he just felt that everybody used to copy him, so he didn't want people copying right. him, right? And he was very exactly. Uh, uh, had anxiety about people copying everything he did so he would uh yes i understand his notebook was all done in mirror writing that's why i was curious what version we got to see so um i know i have i had a professor that specializes in old italian translate he had poems about certain foods in his notebook and i had a, a professor from a university translate a few of his poems for me for my book we included them in their translated versions but yes everything was mirrored well that is just really fascinating is there anything else you'd like to uh you'd like to tell us about that i haven't touched upon leonard's uh leonardo's favorite dish was um minestrone there soup you know. yes minestrone and that does have beans in it that does have beans in it and the tuscans make something called rivolita which is right, right which does have 
beans and lots of vegetables and you can put a lot of like and bread it has bread, bread in it yes yes exactly that is actually what thickens it yes my wife made that the other night oh it's delicious seriously it's delicious. yes there you go yes, it's wonderful it is it's wonderful it's really really good and uh you can if you want to make it with meat i guess you could but it's typically a non a vegetarian soup i believe right because it's beans vegetables and broth yeah and bread the bread thickens it which is great and these were his spoons uh that he used to make fritters the different uh, kinds, of kinds of designs fritters wow and fritters are something that Italians do for different holidays. Like I know the Easter holiday, sure. it's like a fried, we call it fried dough. It's like a fried dough that you put confectioner sugar on. And I know it right. dates back to my grandmother. She used to make that. So it's still in our, in our family. But uh, and then at Christmas time, there's a certain type of fried dough they do too. So the fritters are much in the in the uh, mediterranean diet italian in the italian traditions that's wonderful well dave thank you so much for sharing all that with us so where can people find your book so it sounds like you have some other books as well um yes i'm, I'm the author of 55 books oh my goodness and uh most of them are about uh, chili peppers and, and fiery foods and spices and that sort of thing yes. but uh occasionally i would go and, and do something really historic like this Da Vinci's Kitchen. But this book is out of print, but you can get used copies on Amazon. Just look up Da Vinci's Kitchen on Amazon and they'll pop up and they're not very expensive, but they're, you know, mostly recovered from libraries that have discontinued the book. And uh, they discontinued printing the book. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I have the rights back to this book, and I've done my own edition in paperback. You can uh, find that on Amazon, too. There you go. But uh, the books I get um, say, this book no longer the property of Kent Regional Library, wherever that is. And uh, But at least it's a book, you know? Yes, it's you still a book. book. Yes, you can get the book and, and get the research and information. Well, thank you for that. And people can then, yep, find find your books. Just look up Dave DeWitt. And uh, it's in Da Vinci's Kitchen is the one book that we're talking about today. And thanks so much for sharing that and being part of our April celebration of Leonardo Da Vinci and his love of food and his love as a baby. Thank you so much. Yes, this was fun to, it was fun to go back and look at this thing. It's been so long. Yeah. Good talking to you, Maria. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life, and where we explore the question, what does food mean to you? I hope you enjoyed this is our first April segment to celebrate the life and birthday of Leonardo da Vinci. And as mentioned, we'll be doing that all month. So please listen and share. And remember, if you share this episode, you'll be entered into a drawing to win an autographed copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style, and also share photos of the recipe that we did on today's segment, the Charlotte a la Milanese. If you create that, share a photo of it, hashtag it, the Maria Liberati Show, and again, you'll be entered into an, a drawing to win an autographed copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. This is Maria Liberati, and you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash capital M Maria Liberati. That's a capital M in Maria Liberati. On Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati. On Instagram at Maria Liberati. Let's see, on LinkedIn at M Liberati. You can find me on YouTube. Just look up Maria Liberati. You can find my videos there. My new Roku channel is The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. You can find videos there. Uh, some videos I did in Italy, some are done here in the US. You know, there's videos, uh, cooking videos and travel videos. So take a look. It's a new channel. So we're, we're adding more videos every, actually every day. You can find me there. You can sign up for my newsletter. So you'll know when I have my next book coming up. Uh, actually, my next book is coming out shortly. So uh, it's, a, it's a new book. It's a culinary memoir, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diaries. That will be coming out shortly. Join my newsletter. 
and you'll get notice of that but you'll also find out about special upcoming events that we're going to have virtual events we just did an easter bake along with chef joe borio virtually and we're going to be having a lot more virtual events coming up so get on the newsletter join the newsletter you can sign up go to marialiberati.com and sign up for the newsletter let us know that you want the newsletter we'll be happy to send you a copy i also would like to thank my producer Britton roselle my production intern alexandra troy and today's guest who is dave dewitt food historian and author of in da vinci's kitchen and please stay tuned for next week as i said all this month all the month of april we're celebrating the life and birthday of leonardo da vinci who his birthday was on april 15th so stay tuned next week and don't forget share the episode share a photo of today's recipe hashtag at the maria liberati show um give us some likes and some shares and you'll be entered in a drawing to win an autographed copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.